In most industries, you go to university, but the strongest qualification for a prospective Formula One driver is by winning the feeder series Formula Two. It's a competition where young drivers can prove themselves in equal machinery against their peers. But do all F1 drivers come from F2, or are there different ways to make it into the world's most exclusive motorsport? First up, what is Formula Two? Formula Two is a racing category that has gone through many names over its almost 70-year history. It started as Formula Two, was changed to Formula 3000, then to GP2, and is now back to Formula 2 since 2017. The important thing to know is that it's a series used to train young talent for Formula 1. Drivers compete in the same chassis and engine, meaning that it's a great place for F1 teams to judge talent. There are no designers to increase the aerodynamics of a car or a competition between engine manufacturers. Instead, everyone is on an equal footing. Each team still has its own pit crew and race engineers, but other than that, it's mainly the driver who makes the difference. The competition is sanctioned and run by the FIA, the same body that runs Formula One. And an essential part of F2 is that it awards big points towards a super license, which is needed to drive in F1. To get your hands on a license, you need to earn 40 points, and winning a season of Formula Two will give you exactly that. Formula Two follows a similar calendar to Formula One, but only visits 14 circuits this season as opposed to 22. To add more excitement and another test, F2 features both a sprint race and a full race each weekend. For the sprint race, the qualifying positions of the top 10 drivers are reversed. This all makes for a pretty interesting race and is also the perfect laboratory for Formula One. This way, ideas and formats can be experimented before being rolled out in Formula One. So, how difficult is it? With many of the best drivers in the world, Formula Two is no easy championship to win. At the 2019 Belgium Grand Prix, Formula Two driver Antoine Huber died in a huge accident coming up into the Radalon corner. He was a GP3 series winner, part of the Renault Sport Academy, and had what looked like a long successful career ahead of him. His death reminded everyone just how dangerous the sport can be. The cars may be slower than Formula One, but they are still hugely powerful. An F2 car has around 620 horsepower and a top speed of around 200 miles per hour. The main difficulty in jumping from Formula Two to Formula One is how unique each team's car can be. Comparing this year's Red Bull and this year's Mercedes is like apples and oranges. In the cockpit, each car has a different feel to it. That's why sometimes drivers fail miserably when they switch teams. We're looking at you, Daniel Ricciardo. Another thing about F2 is its peculiar rule about winners. If you become champion, you're banned from coming back and competing in the series again. The idea is to have a constant flow of drivers both in and out of the championship, but it can leave accomplished drivers empty-handed if they don't secure an F1 seat. Keeping the gears turning, as the most clear-cut path to Formula One, Formula Two is largely funded by some of the big teams. Red Bull have a close association with Carlin Racing, which is why Red Bull gets some sponsorship on Carlin's livery. More importantly, Red Bull uses it as a training ground for up-and-coming drivers. The Red Bull Junior team has had plenty of talent come up through Carlin, with the likes of Sebastian Vettel, Daniel Ricciardo, and Carlos Sanz. Meanwhile, Prema Racing is used as Ferrari's talent pool. Recently, Ferrari Academy Academy drivers like Charles Leclerc, Mick Schumacher, and Guan Yu Zhu have made it from Prima Racing into Formula One. This is the best way to really know whether a driver is ready for Formula One or not. Teams can arrange private tests, but they don't really simulate the conditions of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing that are needed to score points in a Grand Prix. The added benefit is that drivers get to know each other. Most of the drivers of the grid this year have raced against each other before in either F2, F3, or karting. There's a famous video clip where a very young Charles Leclerc is interviewed about a karting incident with Max Verstappen. So, once they make it into the big league, they have a pretty good idea of each other's strengths and weaknesses. Up next, how much does it cost to compete in Formula 2? And which F1 champions skipped F2 altogether? So, don't go anywhere. Nothing comes free. It costs a lot of money for a team of mechanics, managers, and staff to keep everything working in a racing competition. But the money spending actually begins way before Formula 2. One report found that parents of of aspiring drivers spend around $120,000 per season, and that's just for karting. Once it gets to Formula 2, it kicks up a notch to $3 million a season. That's why the Mercedes team principal has said the costs of junior racing are totally absurd, and Lewis Hamilton has called it a billionaire boys club. This is why big teams like Mercedes, Ferrari, and Red Bull sponsor drivers in junior categories. It helps to keep them racing and cover the costs, but it's a very long-term investment. That's one of the the reasons why Alpine Sasha
saga with Oscar Piastri is such a big deal. Alpine claimed that it had already invested millions of dollars into preparing Piastri for the sport, and he still jumped ship to McLaren. Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff has said that he's worried that it may set a dangerous precedent for other young drivers. It may be in the best interest of the driver, but if teams can't count on a return on investment, then they may abandon sponsorship altogether. And those fears might already be having an impact. Alpine CEO Laurent Rossi revealed that they're already currently reviewing Renault's young driver program after the Piastri fiasco. He said that they would either have to tighten up their contracts or axe the entire program. Oscar Piastri probably isn't a very popular man in Formula 2 right now. All of them are dreaming of a Formula 1 contract right now, and Piastri was so good that he had two. Which drivers are former champions? So, which of your favorite drivers have won Formula 2 before? You might be surprised. Let's start with the oldest on the grid. That's a seven-time world champion, Lewis Hamilton. After earning a cabinet full of trophies and karting, Hamilton went on to tick every single box as part of McLaren's Young Driver program. He won Formula 3 Euro Series, Masters of Formula 3, and then the big one, GP2 Series, in 2006. That year had names like Nelson Piquet Jr. and Tim O'Glock, but Hamilton won five races and nine more podiums to finish comfortably at the top. Next up is Alpha Tori driver Pierre Gasly, who won the GP2 Series in its final year in 2016. He edged out Ferrari Academy driver Antonio Giovinazzi by eight points, while Williams driver Nicholas Latifi finished down in 16th place. The following year kicked off the rebranded Formula 2 Championship, and it was won by one of the most successful teams, Prema Racing. Since we already know about their connection with Ferrari, it's no surprise that 2017 season was won by Charles Leclerc. Mercedes driver George Russell has also won Formula 2, followed by a few years later by Haas driver Mick Schumacher. Some names that are becoming more and more familiar now are Nick DeVries and Oscar Piastri, with both of them likely lining up on the grid next year. And you guessed it, they were both F2 champions. But is it the only way to go? Not every F1 driver goes through Formula 2, though. Some are lucky or talented enough to make the jump without it. The best example is Max Verstappen. Max had one of the most dominant karting careers in history. Over eight years, he collected 23 trophies. That was enough for him to earn a spot on the Red Bull Junior team in 2014. He did compete in Formula 3 that year, placing third, but Red Bull had already seen enough. They knew he had enormous talent and were ready to bet big on it, promoting him to Toro Rosso, where he became the youngest driver to start a race at the 2015 Australian Grand Prix. Now, we all know the rest. Verstappen climbed a Red Bull senior team to eventually win the 2021 World Championship, and unless there's some miracle from Ferrari, he's winning this year again. And before him, Sebastian Vettel didn't drive in F2 either. He was part of Carlin Motorsport and, just like Max, was in the Red Bull junior team. Another driver who skipped Formula 2 is Lance Stroll, but for very different reasons. His father is billionaire businessman Lawrence Stroll, who bought Racing Point and rebranded it as Aston Martin, who his son still races for. Drivers including Valtteri Bottas, Kevin Magnussen, and Esteban Ocon also skipped Formula 2, but they all had experience in either GP3 or Formula 3. So, what's the lesson? If you don't want to go through F2, either have a lot of money or make your way into the Red Bull program. Do you enjoy watching Formula 2? And do you have your eye on any current drivers? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.